I saw this video about some ifs, and I wanted to show how this can be done using Power Query and pivot tables. So what they're trying to do is you've got this bakery with all different things that it sells, and you want to find how much total sales you've made in quarter two for any given category. And the data is arranged like this. So I copied it into Microsoft Excel. I'll show you what I did. Here's Microsoft Excel. This is the data that's just been copied over from that table. It's in a little bit of an unusual format um, because you've only got you know bakery and breads twice, uh, fruit and produce twice, and so on and so on. Every line is repeated twice. But I'll show you how we can expand this a little bit later. Um, and what you want to do here is if you want to know how much bakery bread you've sold, you know, the answer is going to be $94,276 or you know the sum of the quarter two sales, which is $94,276. But I want to have like a little filter here so I can just say, well, what department and what specific category within that department. So the first thing I always do is I just make a copy of the sheet. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this using pivot tables and Power Query. So now I've got the copy of the sheet here. Notice that this is a range. What I mean is that these are just cells in Excel, right? It is, this is not an object called a table. So if I do Control A, I select the whole range. I go to Home, Format as Table. I can choose any formatting I like. Let's do the blue one. My table has headers. Yes, that's the department category and so on. Click OK. Now notice I've got table design up here, and I can give this table a name. So I'll call this uh, grocery. Right? So now it's the grocery table. That's like an entire object in Excel that I can reference and do things with. And it's much more stable than, than a range. It, it's, you can add to it and delete from it, and the formulas will all work out. You don't have to track down like cell uh, C4 or whatever. You just tell it it's the grocery table, and you want April for produce and fruit. Anyway, OK, so we've got this. Um, so here's what I'll, I'll, I'll do. Um, I will go to Data, From Table Range, to open up Power Query. Grocery Table is selected. right? Quarter 2 Sales, I completely don't need, so I'm going to remove it. The nice thing about Power Query is that every step you do, it keeps track of all the steps down here, which is nice. Um, so that if you do a whole bunch of steps, you can just programmatically apply them to any table. You can say, do these steps to this table and have it be another table and it'll do all the steps for you. Um, and you can also keep track of what you've done, move things around. It's, it's really, really nice. Power Query is fantastic. All right, uh, the other thing I want to do is unpivot. Some of you may be familiar with pivoting. Power Query can do unpivot. So I select April, May, and June. I go to Transform. And then over here under Any Column, I go to Unpivot Columns. There's options, but I just want to unpivot these columns. And now I've got department, category, attribute, and value, right? Uh, I'm just going to call this month, just rename it by double clicking, and this will be Q2 sales, just like in the previous one. Q2 sales is currency, so I click on the little one, two, three, make it currency, and there you go. Uh, then I just go home, close and load. And now I've got a tab called Grocery. It's a table, table design. The name of the table is now Table Grocery. So this is where we can now make the desired pivot table. And that's really easy to do. Just go to Insert, Pivot Table, Table Range is Table underscore Grocery. This is referencing the entire table. I don't have to go here and select all of the rows and columns. It just knows Table Grocery is this entire object. Um, new worksheet. just make it simpler. Don't worry about add it to the data model. We don't, we're not doing that for this one. So I click OK. And I want the sum of my Q2 sales. I just drag them down to the sum of values. Uh, I want this to look like dollars, so I'll right click on it. Value field settings, number format. And I wish there was a quicker way of doing this. Currency. I don't need decimal places because it's all whole numbers. And then click OK and click OK. So that's your entire quarter two sales for this entire grocery store. But I want to know it by um, a category, and I can do it by like you know department if I want to. Um, right? So I can put in months because really what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some filter buttons. So I inserted an extra row. I'm just going to drag this over, and then when I click on this table, 
go back to design, I'm sorry, pivot table analyze, insert slicer. I want a slicer for department and a slicer for category, and then click OK. It'll give me these two guys like this. Um, I can move this over a little bit. OK, so now this is it. This is the thing that I wanted. I click on bread, and it tells me how much bread in the bakery I have. The others are faded out, right? So I can't select. There's no frozen bread, right? There's nothing there. It's just bakery. And it's $94,276, which is the correct amount, right? Uh, and I can do that for anything. All these different categories. I'm sorry, department should go over here. Yeah, deli, sandwich, bakery, bread, beer and wine, pilsner, and so on, right? Um, the nice thing about tables as an object, like I said, if I go to raw data 2 and I want to do another seafood and salmon and you know like this and like that and then another seafood salmon and you know like that right let's we can move these just to be consistent with the pattern we don't have to though right and I want to know how much salmon I've sold the answer is 86,526 so I go back to my pivot table here I go to frozen, right? But only pizza is available for frozen, right? I go to, it's not there. So I have to do data, refresh all. And look, this just was added because we just added, I'm sorry, under seafood. Here we go. Crab and salmon. And under salmon, it's 86,526, just like we got before. That's the nice thing about using tables. You can just add to your table, click data, refresh all, and get more stuff. So if I wanted to do uh, frozen veggies, like that, frozen veggies, sold a lot of frozen veggies in June, tis the season, uh, go back here. Go to frozen. I only have pizza available. Refresh all. Now we've got veggies available. So 88,000 for frozen pizzas and 113,000 for frozen veggies. Uh, if you don't want to have to do that thing where, you know, I'm clicking around and it's basically empty, what you can do is like right click on this. There's slicer settings. Yeah, hide items with no data. I'm going to check that, click OK. Right click here, do the same thing, slicer settings, uh, hide items with no data, and there you go. Right? And then just clear this and clear this. So seafood, produce, and so on. Right. So frozen, it'll show these two. All right. And I guess on department, we really don't have to hide because... You know, you can play around with the settings. I'm getting a bit off course, but that's the idea. So I take this raw data, which is not a table. It's just a range of cells. I make a copy of it. I make it into a table. I pull it into Power Query. I unpivot. I now have a nice long table that looks like this. From this table, I create this pivot with the filters and slicers, just like that. Uh, that is all. Hope you found this helpful.